Praise be to Christ Jesus. Dear children, I hope you are all safe and happy at home. In the last class, we had discussed a few things. We will be continuing the discussion about the Emmaus experience in today's class. Before we begin, let us meditate upon this Emmaus experience where the disciples were able to experience Christ and recognize His presence in their lives. Let us join our hands, close our eyes and meditate upon the same. Heavenly Father, You who sent Your Son into this world for our salvation, we thank You for this blessing. Jesus Christ, who is Your Son, has become the reason why we have been called into faith and live according to Your will in today's world. We thank You and ask of Your grace to lead a holy and pure life during these times. We ask of the blessings and the grace of the Holy Spirit to be guided and enlightened throughout the walks of our life. We ask all this through the intercession of Mother Mary and in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Lesson 11, the Emmaus experience and the first part of it was what we discussed in the last class. We stopped with the portion where we read the Gospel according to St. Luke Chapter 24, verse 23, where we saw their hearts had been kindled and they felt a fire in their hearts when Christ had interpreted the scriptures to them. Keeping that in mind, we will be able to realize and recognize that through the entire life, passion, miracles, death and resurrection of Christ, the prophecies which had been made about Christ the Messiah from the Old Testament has been fulfilled and it is revealed to the disciples at Emmaus when Christ interpreted the scriptures. He began from the times of the prophecies that Moses made about the promised Saviour. Jesus clearly explains to them each of the incidents and prophecies made about him in the Old Testament and then defines and shows us how it is fulfilled in the New Testament during this Emmaus experience. Through the disciples, each of us are also able to understand and know that most and all of these experiences have been a call for us to know, recognize, walk, talk and live with Christ through our life. Having this in mind, we must understand that the Emmaus experience has a significant space when we look at the two more parts of it. One is when Jesus interprets the scriptures and two is when he gives thanks and breaks the bread. These two significant things that is the liturgy of the word and the liturgy of the breaking of bread is the prominent part which we see in the Holy Eucharist. From the Emmaus experience, we can now relate and understand that the existence and the establishment of the Holy Eucharist is a call and a representation of Christ who lives with us through His risen form. The liturgy of the Word and the liturgy of the Holy Eucharist are the two prominent parts of the Holy Mass which we celebrate in our Catholic Church. Why are they important? It is because we experience God through these two liturgies in our life during the Holy Mass. Firstly, we will be discussing about the liturgy of the Word. Jesus interpreted the scriptures to the Emmaus disciples and they had experienced the fire which was kindled in their hearts and they had also felt the peace that the scriptures brought into them. When we stand in and prepare ourselves for the liturgy of the word in the Holy Eucharist or the celebration of the Holy Mass, we prepare ourselves to experience the same peace and the same fire which is to be kindled in our hearts. If we take a proper look to understand this, we see that the Tri-Glory Hymn which is also known as the Trisangian in English, is sung before the liturgy of the word. In Malayalam, 
This song goes by Shabdam Uyarthi Padiruvin. In English, we begin the prayer with the words Lift up your voices and sing aloud. In the second part of this prayer, we say Holy the God, Holy the Mighty One, Holy the Immortal One, have mercy on us. This hymn of praise to the Holy Triune God is a simple example and the moment where we, the laity, are preparing ourselves to experience Christ and His message through the liturgy of the Word. The following prayer, which we will listen to now, will help us to understand how these prayers lead us and guide us to prepare ourselves and present ourselves in the right way for the liturgy of the Word. Let us take a look at this specific part before the liturgy of the Word in the Holy Mass in the Malayalam version. Yangalayarthavai devame yang ede jiva dai gundai vigo maya kalpanangal de madera sorum Sravikin the enum grehikin the nanyang labuthia pragasipi genami Otherwise, I'll message the Yangalaku Varikinas, Nehom, Sarnom, that shame young Lil Palamani in the denim. There and the Yangalang, yes, so the Ginnam Angadagar, Nathalim and Gretal, young lay so high genami. Pidaw Mutranam Verisatal, Maumaya, Survey, Sura in the Kim. The prayer here by which we prepare ourselves for the service of the Word of God says, O Lord, enlighten our minds and intellect so as to listen to your sweet voice. Through this prayer, once we prepare ourselves for the liturgy of the Word, we must understand it is Jesus himself who is talking to us through the Word of God. That is, the scriptures, the Word of God that is read, during the liturgy of word is literally the words of Christ himself speaking to us just like he did during the Emmaus experience along with his disciples. We must know that the readings which happens during the liturgy of the word includes three parts. A reading from the books in the Old Testament which goes with the first reading. The second reading which is taken from the epistles or the letters written by each of the apostles and the third reading which is done by the celebrant and that which is taken from the gospel. This gospel reading is specifically where we listen to and understand what Christ wants to talk to us and take into our lives so as to lead a good Christian life. With this portion of the liturgy of the word where we understand the presence of Jesus, let us take a look at how Christ Jesus, the risen Lord, is present in the Holy Eucharist. We all know that the Holy Eucharist is the central part of any Christian's faith. And why is that so? It is because of the presence of Jesus Christ by his body and blood in the Holy Eucharist. We see that the chalice and the cup which is raised during the submission prayer clearly represents the body and blood of Christ through the process of transubstantiation. Why do we give so much prime importance into understanding this presence of Christ? We know that the celebrant who offers the Holy Eucharist or the Holy Mass on the altar is the representation of Christ Jesus who had offered his sacrifice on Mount Calvary. Which means right from the beginning of the Holy Mass until the end blessings is a complete part of our journey from the birth, life, miracles, death, passion and resurrection of Christ. In the beginning of the Holy Mass, we sing the exaltation prayers and Gloria prayers where we remember the birth of Jesus. During the chalice and the cup being raised, we remember the journey of Jesus from Mount Calvary to the cross and later in the submission prayers and the intercessory prayers, we proclaim our faith through the creed and further believe in our resurrection in the end prayer where we submit ourselves to the awareness that just as Christ had risen, we will also resurrect from the dead on the day of the judgment. Why do we see that all these is specifically remembered during the Holy Mass? It is for us to understand 
that the entire service offered during the liturgy of the Holy Eucharist is a recreation and a representation of the life of Jesus Christ. And we are partaking and experiencing this entire journey of Christ's life in each moment and each part of the Holy Eucharist. With this in mind, we should take utmost care and importance in being completely mindful and partaking wholeheartedly with a pure mind, soul and body in the Holy Eucharist. We, as small children, should take utmost care in following this. Now that we have understood the presence of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist, let us take this thought very seriously and try to sit back calmly and understand how much of love Christ has showered upon us, his children, to get down into that little tiny holy host and become one with us through the Holy Eucharist. My dear children, as you prepare yourselves before consuming or receiving Christ and his body and blood in the Holy Eucharist, make sure you remember all the sacrifices and the divine love that God showers upon us. Try to recollect all the things that God has done for you. Thank Him for all these blessings. Thank Him for the presence that He is being to us in our life. And submit yourselves wholly to this faith in the Holy Eucharist. Prepare yourselves to completely submit your heart, mind and soul towards the Christ whom we receive in the Eucharist. Let us meditate each day on how Christ is present in the Holy Eucharist and thank Him for the same. With that, we will conclude today's lesson and we will meet in the next class to discuss about the next lesson. Thank you and have a great day. Get it.